tough and they're really rough and nothing's working, but there's something inside of you that says, I just have to follow that because you don't know who you are. Welcome to the Bench on self Love podcast. My name is Anna, but you can call me Anshi, and thank you so much for tuning in. Bench on self Love podcast is about navigating binge eating disorder struggles, disordered eating, and negative body image. Although I share my personal experience with having a negative body image, eating disorders, and I do uncover bits of my personal story, this podcast is not as much about me as it is about you beautiful human beings who struggle, who fight, who grow, and who evolve every single day. This podcast is for anyone who wants to feel supported on their recovery journey and simply for anyone who's trying to improve their relationship with themselves. I believe together we can turn something so negative such as binge eating into something more positive and hopefully go from binging on food and self-hatred to binging on self-love. Subscribe to the Binge on Selva podcast on your favorite platform and tune in every Tuesday for a new episode. But there's something inside of you that says, I just have to follow that because you don't know who you are. Disclaimer, Binge on Selva podcast is intended for informational purposes only. It doesn't provide professional medical advice and it is not a substitute for diagnosis or treatment. In this podcast, we cover the topic of eating disorders, so if you find this topic triggering, it may be better for you not to listen to this podcast. Always make sure to put your mental health first. Hello guys, thank you for tuning in. My name is Anna, but you can call me Anchi, and you're listening to the Bench on Selma podcast. First and foremost, I hope you are all doing great. I hope that you're treating yourself and your body in a nice way. I have to apologize for not posting on a regular basis for the past couple of months. I would like to come up with some decent explanation, but I always want to be as honest as I can. So the truth is I felt a little burned out creatively in terms of this podcast. And also I was having a hard time treating myself and my body in a healthy way. And I was also very, very lazy and unmotivated to do pretty much anything for a few months. So that's not something I would be necessarily proud of, but I also don't want to lie. So that's the ugly truth. I hope to be posting according to my previous schedule again, which means a new episode each week. I hope to do that. Make sure to subscribe to the Bench on self podcast so you don't miss any of the new episodes. Before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to quickly share something with you. I was thinking about how to make this podcast more about you, the beautiful souls that you are, and considering you are going through a lot of similar things like I do and like so many other people out there do, I wanted to invite you to share with me and with the podcast listeners your achievement. No matter how big or small, anything that you've accomplished either this day, this week, this month, or at any time on your journey. I, because I want to spread more positive messages in this podcast and remind not just you or me, but everyone else that every little step forward, every little achievement we earn is amazing and it's something to be grateful for. It can be anything, whether it relates to body image, recovery process, self-love journey, growth, change of habits, choosing yourself and your own happiness, something that you feel grateful for or something that just made you feel really happy that day, whatever it may be. I'll share a few of your stories at the beginning of each episode just, just to share your amazing journeys and spread motivation and positivity within this podcast and this community. If you would like to share your achievements with me and with my Bench on Selva podcast listeners, feel free to email me at anci at benchonselvlove.com or DM me on Instagram at benchonselvlove or you can also visit benchonselvlove.com slash note. That's benchonselvlove.com slash n-o-t-e and fill a short form with what you're grateful and happy for and maybe you will hear your achievement on the next Binge on Self Love episode. Also, one last thing before we start today's episode. I've created a poll for you to vote 
And what I want you to vote for is whether or not you would like me to create a place or a platform for our growing Bench on Selva podcast community. What I'm talking about is either a Facebook group or Discord community where we could get more personal, share our highs and lows, support each other and basically discuss everything and anything related to body image and recovery and self-acceptance and all that. So if you're listening on Spotify, please make sure to open the episode description and you'll see a poll down below in the description where you can vote and let me know whether or not you would be interested in such community. So that's all for the intro, I swear. And now without further ado, let's get into today's episode. So today I want to deep dive into the relationship we have with exercise and how can we build one that's healthy, sustainable, and that has a positive impact on both our mental and physical health, rather than feeding into our negative body image. As someone who had been struggling with eating disorders and who till this very day does struggle with body image, it's been a tough challenge to find a balanced and healthier relationship with exercise. And I'm saying healthier on purpose because it's nowhere near perfect. It's nowhere where I would want to be. And sometimes I still switch back to the all or nothing mindset, which is something I've covered on this podcast multiple times. So that's the mindset where I think that I need to exercise a certain number of times a week. Otherwise, I may as well sit on a couch and not try it all. And also, some days I have this love-hate relationship with exercise when I'm like, I don't want to do this, but I need to exercise because I don't like myself and the way my body looks. So that's a really, really long journey. And I'm at a much better place than I was a few years back, which is something I will talk about a little later in this episode. But I still have a long way to go and a lot to learn on my journey. And... Most importantly, I've came to accept that it is a process. It's not a one-time thing. It's not something you reach one day and then you never ever struggle with it again. What I also need to mention is that it's April, or at least the time when I'm recording this episode is April, but of course you can listen to this episode on any time of the year. But spring has just begun and we can start preparing ourselves mentally for the commercials and tutorials on how to get ready for summer. And businesses and influencers are going to promote, or maybe they are already, all of these miraculous diets and products on how to lose weight and get shredded and lean and how to tone those apps for summer so that you can call yourself that you are bikini body ready. And when you do have a negative body image, it may be fairly easy to fall for that idea that you need to change your body just because the swimsuit season is around the corner. I have to say, and I have to admit, I did fall for that pretty much every single year. Moreover, I didn't even need to see any commercials anymore or influencers telling me to do their workouts so I get abs or whatever. It was so imprinted in my mind for years that each winter I promised myself that this year It's going to be different. I will finally lose all that extra weight I've gained from binge eating and I'm going to get super lean and shredded for summer. So what I usually did during the winter time was that I started to follow some crazy diet where I was barely eating what I needed to eat and I was following YouTube tutorials on how to work out. And as you can probably guess, it usually didn't last for very long and I would end up binge eating more and more and I would end up hating myself even more. This simply never worked for me. Yet the idea of not changing my body and the idea of simply putting on swimsuit and enjoying the sun and the weather and the water without the need to change my body in any way seemed too unbearable at that time. I couldn't believe that that's just it. That's 
that you can accept your body the way it is and you don't have to do anything in order to enjoy the summer. I couldn't wrap my head around that and I couldn't understand that I do not need to torture myself by crazy diets or by following a bikini body ready program. Even if I decided that I don't necessarily need to do anything to be able to put on bikini in the summer, I saw so many other people do that, do exactly the same, trying to lose weight for the summer, whether it was people on social media, but also people around me. So that's how it's been for me. I've definitely had a rocky relationship with exercise, going from moving my body on a regular basis through obsession with going to the gym every single day to not moving my body at all. But does it really have to be this hard to build a healthy and sustainable relationship with exercise? Well, not necessarily, but there are some things that may make it a little more complicated. First, there's the diet culture that's been present in our lives of most of us. And I dare to say most likely since the late childhood and early teenage years for most of us. I've talked about dieting and why I don't like diets and what's my opinion on them in this podcast on numerous occasions. So uh, if you've been part of the Binge on Selvaf community for a while, you know my opinion on diets and why I don't do diets anymore and why I don't think they're either healthy or sustainable. But diets have and I think will be unfortunately part of our society and culture for a really, really long time. You can come across different kinds of topics related to dieting literally everywhere. On social media, in magazines, on TV, in movies, on podcasts, everywhere. So it's very difficult to avoid it. And when you're having a bad body image day or you're at a point in life where you don't feel good in your skin or you're going through something that's challenging, it may be easy to either fall for the idea that you should too be on a diet or it may make you feel bad and mad at yourself because you're not following a diet and a workout plan or whatever that will make you ready for either summer or for anything else. And what's often also hard is seeing other people following those trends and other people doing that and then you are you feel like you're the only one in this world that's not doing that because you're trying to build a healthier relationship with your body and with exercise and with yourself. So that can be a really challenging for our mental health. And so you then start scrolling through social media, seeing everyone seemingly in such a good shape and living their best life, being so happy and content in their body while you're just sitting there hating every inch of your body and questioning every meal you've had today and asking yourself whether you should also be on a diet. Then there's the pressure that we put on ourselves. We want to feel our best, be our best and look our best. And I think there's ne there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. But I feel like our appearance and our body is oftentimes the first thing we focus on when we don't feel our best. How many times have you wished to enhance something about your body? How many times have you wished that you could just change this or that thing about yourself, deluding yourself into believing that then you will finally be happy? But we could change everything about ourselves, literally everything, and we could and we would still always find something else we won't like. And so, like I've said, I didn't even need anyone or, or anything to remind me that I should be getting in shape because the summer is just around the corner or whatever. I didn't need any of that to remind me because I was very good at reminding myself that I should be doing something and I was really good at putting all that pressure on myself, which is something that so many of us do. We put so much pressure on ourselves to look a certain way. And if you put pressure on yourself to work out because you want to look a certain way, then 
you can never build a healthy relationship with exercise just because you want it and you are doing it for all the wrong reasons. I've tried to exercise in order to lose weight for years and to be fair, it only made me hate exercise even more. I hated it because I felt like shit, because I felt fat, I felt ugly in my body, I was binge eating all the time and I saw exercise as the only way how to change that and as the only way how to get the body of my dreams if you will so like i've said i've learned one thing and that's you will never ever have a positive and healthy relationship with exercise or movement in general if you only do it and perceive it as a tool for weight loss and a tool for changing or shrinking your body. Once you realize there's so much more, that there are so many other benefits of moving our bodies that we completely overlook because we are blindsided by the number on the scale, That's when you can change your mindset and your attitude towards working out and that's when you can start building that healthy relationship with exercise. If we want to build a relationship with exercise that's not negative, that's sustainable and that we will benefit from, we need to reframe exercise as a form of self-care rather than a tool to torture or punish ourselves. Exercise is a mean to self-love and health rather than a tool to lose weight. And that leads me to my next point, which is why should we even bother fixing our relationship with exercise? I know from my own experience that when you are recovering from an eating disorder or when you're trying to rebuild the relationship with food and with your body, exercise and working out can be triggering. It can be one of those triggers of negative self-talk, of weightless mindset, or even a trigger of the feeling like you are working out because you want to punish yourself for eating. I know that everyone's journey to a healthy relationship with both food and exercise will be different because our environment and circumstances are different and I'm definitely not a psychologist or a fitness trainer so I can only share what helped me on my personal journey. But one thing that has definitely helped me in the bigger picture was giving myself a break and taking time. During my years with anorexia, I was going to the gym literally, literally every single day for many, many months, vigorously, and I would hardly ever have any day off. And even if I did, I would still work out at home or do something. And then with the onset of binge eating disorder, working out became a way how to try to quote unquote undo the damage and that's when I started to hate exercise and every movement for me felt like a reminder of my failure and it felt like a torture because all I could think of was how useless this is going to be because I already knew that I'm going to end up binge eating anyway. So what I mean by giving yourself a break is take the time to heal your relationship with yourself and with food first. If working out is triggering for you like it was for me, if you hate doing it or you can't find a healthy balance, I would first work on things that need to be healed first, which means your relationship with food, your relationship with yourself and stuff like that. And in the meantime, you can always find ways how to move your body in a way that's neutral, in a way that will make you feel energized and happy while not putting pressure on you to perform well or without the pressure to reach a certain result. And I'm thinking taking a walk or going for a walk with your partner, your friend, riding a bike, dancing with the headphones on or roller skating or whatever you feel like you could enjoy without putting any pressure on yourself. For example, during my binge eating disorder recovery, I completely stopped going to the gym. It wasn't necessarily something intentional, but it just somewhat naturally happened. And I think it was something that I really needed at that time. And I found other ways how to move my body. I fell in love with yoga with Adrian videos. 
I was going for a hike from time to time and I was going for a walk a couple of times couple of times a week and it perfectly worked for me I wasn't putting any pressure on myself. I knew that the moment I would uh, start going to the gym, I would tend to compare myself and my body and my results to people around me, to people uh, on social media, to my friends who are working out and stuff like that. So I stopped going to the gym for some time to really heal my relationship with food and to heal my relationship with myself. And then slowly as I was recovering from the eating disorder, I started experimenting with what kind of exercise I liked. And it's all been and it still is till this very day a learning path. It's about figuring out what I enjoy, what makes me happy, what works for me, what's sustainable for my lifestyle. And I know that many people may be on the other side of the spectrum and working out too much. And by too much, I mean being obsessive about working out and feeling upset and angry if they don't work out that day. Working out too much may also mean putting way too much pressure on yourself to perform a certain way. Then feel the pressure to constantly improve and not giving your body and your mind enough time and space to recover. For me, it's mostly been the other way around. I've had a negative attitude towards exercise and till this day I sometimes think like, well, what's the point of trying? What's the point of waking up early tomorrow and going to the gym I've when I've already missed like two days? But those are exactly the days when I remind myself that going to the gym and working out once a week or once every two weeks is better than not going at all and not doing anything at all. When I feel like I want to go for a run and I don't feel good about it because I couldn't reach some stupid goal or whatever, that's when I remind myself that even running for one minute is better than not going at all. And I'm not doing it for anything other than to move my body and to give myself a break from sitting in front of a computer all day and to do something that's beneficial for my health, both physical and mental health. And I don't care if Jane Smith that I follow on Instagram just ran a half marathon. I mean, great for her, she's great, but I no longer want to put that pressure on myself because I know that if I did, it only left me unmotivated and hating myself for not being as good as somebody else. What I think is key on your journey of building a healthy relationship with exercise and movement is to change and reframe the mindset from perceiving exercise as a tool, as a tool for weight loss or as a tool for changing your body or even as a tool for punishing yourself for eating, is to reframe it and to change the mindset and to see exercise as a form of self-care and self-love and see it as something that's good to do but there's no pressure there's no there's no comparison needed there's no uh, level that you need to reach it's just about feeling good it's great to move your body but it's not something you should be obsessing over it's not something that should give you anxiety or make you feel stressed or give you a sense of comparison And most importantly, exercise doesn't equal weight loss. There are so many other health benefits to exercise and weight loss is the last of them we should care about. Find exercise and movement that you'll enjoy. Don't focus on what's trendy, what people on social media are doing right now or what your friends are doing. Find something that you enjoy and that you love and that makes you feel happy and energized. Just because 90% of people on social media go to the gym, it doesn't mean you have to go to the gym too. If it's not something that you want to try or you want to do, try something else. Try not to focus on the visual outcome. Focus on how it makes you feel, how moving your body makes you feel. I can share my two cents in here because when I was like 16 or 17, I started going to Zumba with my mom. And I think any millennial out there can confirm that Zumba was super popular back in the days. And during those Zumba lessons, I remember I was feeling so good, so happy, carefree, 
I didn't really know what I was doing most of the time, but I but the thing is that I had a really great time. I was there with my mom and with like 20 other random people and we were all dancing to the music and enjoying every minute of it. And I haven't felt that in any other dance lessons or in anything else because I didn't feel the pressure to to reach anything. I was there just to move my body and to enjoy it. And I wasn't thinking about if this exercise is going to help me lose weight or if it's going to help me form muscles or burn this amount of calories. I didn't give a shit about those things. And that's the kind of feeling I love and I try to find in exercise. Also, don't forget to go at your own pace. Don't be like, hmm, so in order to rebuild my relationship with exercise, I need to go to the gym five five times a week. Because that's not true. Start at your own pace and go at your own pace. Don't compare your journey to anybody else's journey. Find what works for you, what makes you feel happy and good and what doesn't make you feel pressured to achieve something. And once you find something you enjoy, maybe just for now, nobody says you have to find this one specific type of workout and then do it for the rest of your life. Just find something that you like and enjoy and rather than perfection, try focusing on sustainability. Don't set yourself real unrealistic goals and if that's triggering, don't set them at all. Like I've said, it's better working out once a week and feeling great than setting a goal of working out five times a week and then feeling miserable because it's not sustainable. Try ditching the all or nothing mindset, which is something I still struggle with, like I've told you at the beginning of this episode. And try to remind yourself that every freaking workout counts. Every movement that you do counts. It doesn't matter if it's five minutes or 50 minutes. It all counts. And most importantly, don't compare yourself and your body to anyone, online and offline. This is you, your journey, your relationship with food and exercise and with yourself. So there's no room for comparison with anyone. And last but not least, I wanted to leave you today with some more practical tips from a professional point of view. So... I've asked my brother, Leos, hi Leos, who is a certified personal trainer to share his tips on how to build a healthy and sustainable relationship with exercise. So I'm going to read the points that he gave to me that he think from his experience and from his education that can help you to build a healthier relationship with exercise. First is to sit down and evaluate your health condition and options that you have. Write down your time options, write down what you like to do, write down what you don't like to do, write down something that doesn't stress you or that doesn't make you anxious. The point is to find something that you may like or something that sounds okay for you while also figuring out what you don't want to do. For example, if you don't like going to the gym and if you are not a fan of team sports, try to come up with something that you can imagine doing, like for example, going for a walk. Just find something that doesn't trigger you. Number two, it's important to evaluate your time options. Do you have a free hour to do something every Monday and every Wednesday or do you have a busy schedule so you're only capable of doing something on the weekends? Whatever it is, make sure to figure out the schedule that works for you. Number three, don't go all in. Start slowly and gradually. It's always better to start with doing one thing at one time than setting yourself some unrealistic goals that you can't reach. Number four, If progress is something that motivates you and that doesn't stress you, try checking your exercise with smartwatch so you can see and measure the progress and improvement. But the point is not to stress you out, the point is to see how you're progressing over time. For example, a couple of weeks ago when you started with going on a walk, you were able to walk this distance or walk at this pace And now after a couple of weeks of going on walks on a regular basis, you are now able to walk a little further or you're able to 
walk a little faster or your heartbeat is not as high as it was before. All of that progress can motivate you to keep going. However, if that's something that would only stress you out, then definitely don't feel pressured to track any progress. That's solely up to you. Number five, if you want to set yourself goals, definitely do that with a professional. Don't be afraid to find and ask a fitness trainer or physiotherapist or anyone else or any other professional to help you set goals that are healthy for you and that are realistic for you. Number six, be prepared that change often comes at the cost of your comfort zone. And stepping out of your comfort zone, even just a little bit, even just like half of a step out of your comfort zone, it's going to help you change. Number seven, do something you like. If you're going to force yourself to do sport or to do something that you hate, you're most likely not going to stick to it because it won't work for you. So really put focus on finding something that you will enjoy doing. Number eight, create a routine because it's going to help you stick to working out or to moving your body on a regular basis. It's always recommended to consult your current situation, your current health state with a professional and it's always better if you're starting a new sport or a new activity to get yourself a trainer. Number nine, don't compare yourself and your journey to anybody else, especially if you are just starting out. Don't compare yourself to anyone because someone else could possibly be doing this for years and there's no reason to compare your beginning to someone else's middle or whatever part of their journey. And number 10 is you are doing it for yourself. So these are tips from my brother, who is a professional trainer. So thank you so much for sharing these tips with me. And also thank you guys for joining me today in this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the Binge on Salva podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or any other platform where you're getting your podcasts. And I'll be back next week with another episode. Until then, take care and talk to you soon. Bye. have to be your biggest fan and when things are really tough and they're really rough and nothing's working but there's something inside of you that says i just have to follow that because you don't know who